uh, today the topic for discussion is constraint optimization. And specifically, we are going to be looking at problems where we want to minimize the function fx where x is in some set capital X. And we are going to assume that it is a convex set. Okay, so examples of convex sets are ax equal to b ax less than equal to b, x greater than equal to zero, two norm of x is less than equal to r, a less than x less than b. Okay, so these are all different types of convex sets. Oh, there is another one which is simplex. So x greater than equal to zero, summation of xi, equals to one, i equals one to n. So these are typical convex sets that uh, one may be interested in, and we would like to minimize the function over such a convex set. Of course, the convex set could be of different types, but these are the ones that are typically useful uh, from an algorithmic viewpoint. So where does these kind of sets appear? So well, it appears in a lot of different uh, situations in various areas. So for instance, you, you have done uh, an electricity market example in your assignment one, where the constraint was basically, so in economics, so the electricity market was, uh, was an example from an economic system where the, typically the constraint is total demand minus total supply. So in that case, total demand for electricity minus total supply of electricity is equal to zero. Okay, so the demand has to be equal to supply in an economic system. Then in physics, typically you want to conserve energy, so therefore the energy has to be preserved uh, if, through a transformation uh, in civil engineering or telecommunications, there is a total flow constraint. Flow has to be less than equal to capacity. Okay, so in the case of civil engineering or in the case of chemical engineering, you have several pipes that are joining at some location. And then the flow has to be con conserved the flow that are coming from these three different inlets have to be conserved uh, when they are passing through the some other outlet. So, so in this case, or, or in the case of communication network, these will be packets and the total packets has to be conserved, uh, assuming that we want all the packets to reach the destination. So in those cases, there is some sort of flow constraint that needs to be met. Um, and, and then there could be some capacity constraints that also needs to be met in those systems whenever you are doing an optimization. Uh, when you're doing some statistical study, statistics, statistics slash math slash probability, the simplex, you typically have to optimize a function over a simplex. Which is x greater than equal to zero summation of xi equals to one. So this is the space of all probability distributions in n dimensions. And you would like to minimize or maximize the function over the simplex. Um, so that's also another area where uh, naturally, there is a convex set over which you are trying to minimize or optimize a function. So those are typically um, different examples where you have constraints that are of this type. Okay. And again, the goal is to 
come up with different algorithms that solves problems of this type, minimizing a function, differentiable function over a convex set. So the first thing we would like to study are the necessary conditions for optimality. Just like we did in the previous case, okay, so what's the necessary condition for optimality? So the theorem is if x star is optimal, then gradient of f at x star x minus x star is greater than or equal to zero for all x in capital X. Oh, there has to be a transpose. So let me put a transpose here. Okay, I'll let you guys note it down and then we'll talk about the proof. Well, I have to actually define what optimal means. So I will write local minimum. So let me first define a local minimum because I haven't done it for optimization over convex set. So X star is local minimum if f of x star is less than f of x for all x in capital X norm of x minus x star less than equal to epsilon. Okay, I think the definition of local minimum is pretty um, easy to understand uh, and it's sort of imitating the definition of local minimum for the unconstrained optimization case. So pictorially, here is my convex set and this is my x star let's say i'm claiming that this is my optimal solution this is a local minimum then i must be able to find a ball around within this convex set i should be able to find a open set such that the value of the function is always larger than or equal to the value of the function at x star. Okay, so fx must be larger than or equal to f of x star for all x within this particular ball. But the ball must be within the convex set. It need not go outside of the convex set. So that's the definition of a local minimum. Any any question on the definition of local minimum? Okay. Now the question is, how can we prove this statement? So let's let's see if we can start from this expression and go ahead and prove this particular expression.
let's think about it. So I know okay this is okay so this is for all x in x okay whereas in this case i'm only looking at x minus x star less than epsilon so i'm only looking at a small area around x star whereas this particular necessary condition requires this inequality to hold for any x in the set capital x so i could potentially take a x that is much much farther away from this ball. So what should we do? Let's uh, think about it. So let me draw a line. And this ray is actually x minus x star ray. And I'm claiming that if I move in this direction, for small enough step, then my value of function should be higher. Okay, so let me define another function g of alpha equals to f of x star plus alpha x minus x star. So x is in capital X. So I pick any point in the set capital X and I define a function as a function of step size alpha. Alpha is greater than or equal to zero. And I write that f of x star plus alpha x minus x star um, is equal to g of alpha. Where does this point lies? Let me also put additional constraint alpha is less than equal to one. Does it always lie in the convex set or does it lie, it, can it lie outside of the convex set? What do you guys think? Can we show that this po particular point is always going to lie in convex set and cannot go outside of the convex set given these three restrictions? So I'm picking a point X from the convex set X itself and alpha is between zero and one. So it has to be in the convex set, right? Because that's the definition of a convex set. If you have two points in the convex set, they uh, everything in a line between them must be also. Right, right, exactly. That's that's exactly right. So thanks for um, your comment. So this is this can be written as one minus alpha x star plus alpha x. I know that x star lies in the convex set, x lies in the convex set, and I'm just taking a convex combination of it. So this must be also in the convex set, capital X itself. All right, so this particular point lies in the convex set. So that part is clear because we are picking a point within this particular line segment uh, between x star and x. Now the second uh, thing I'm going to add is I'm going to let alpha be very, very small, positive, but very, very small number. In which case, I'm actually not moving too far out from x star, I'm going to be within this particular region. So I'm going to pick alpha small but positive. Okay, all right, so what happens then? I know that G alpha What's the gradient of G alpha with respect to alpha at alpha equals to zero? So let's think about it. That's limit alpha goes to zero f of x star plus alpha x minus x star minus f of x star over alpha. So let's 
write it down. This is limit alpha goes to zero. I have assumed that the function f is differentiable. So this is going to be equal to, I'm gonna use Taylor series expansion. So f of x star plus alpha gradient of f at x star transpose x minus x star plus small o of alpha, the whole expression divided by alpha. Okay, any questions on this particular step? Oh, I have to have minus FF X star here. That's this term. Okay, so the F of X star and minus F of X star gets canceled. Um, and what I'm left with is gradient of fx star x minus x star okay perfect Now, what do we know about the value of this expression? The value of this expression for alpha sufficiently small. What is this value equal to? Or not equal to, but um, greater than equal to. Let's go back to the Let's go back to the definition of local minimum. So I'm basically claiming that as long as X minus X star is small, my FX is going to be greater than or equal to F of X star. So coming back to this expression, I see that I have F of a point which is close to X star, but not exactly X star. So it's within the epsilon ball minus F of X star. So I know that that's going to be, the numerator is going to be greater than or equal to zero. And I'm picking alpha small but positive. So the denominator is strictly greater than zero. So this whole expression actually is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, because you have a non, you have a non-negative term in the numerator and you have a positive term in the denominator. So the overall term is going to be non-negative. And so this is greater than or equal to zero. And that's why this will be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, does the argument make sense? Okay, let me go over it once again. So I know that one minus alpha X star plus alpha X is going to be in the convex set capital X. If I pick alpha very, very small, I can be close to X star, as close to X star as I want. And the fact that X star is a local minimum means that FX is always greater than or equal to F of X star in the neighborhood of X star. So I use these three ideas to basically claim that if I look at this expression in the limit, uh, it's a non-negative expression. So if I take a limit alpha goes to zero, the non-negativity will be preserved even at the limit. And I realize that the limiting uh, value is actually exactly equal to gradient of fx star transpose x minus x star. And therefore that is going to be non-negative. And that proves the necessary conditions for optimality. So if X star is local minimum, 
then this must be true for every x in capital X. So every x in the convex set. Any, any question on this proof? Okay. And an obvious sufficient conditions for optimality. Suppose that F is convex. Then X star is global minimum if and only if gradient of Fx star transpose X minus X star is greater than or equal to zero for all X in capital X. Okay, so again, when the function f is convex, then the necessary condition also becomes a sufficient condition. And the proof follows a similar line of reasoning. Okay. Any questions so far on the necessary and sufficient conditions for optimality? They are all mimic mimicking the same set of arguments we used for um, the unconstrained optimization proofs. Perfect. So let's look at some examples of what exactly these conditions mean in uh, for a generic function f for a specific convex set. So some examples. Let's say I am minimizing a function f of x such that X is greater than or equal to zero. And I claim that X star is an optimal solution. I'm going to let X be denoted by X one to Xn. So in this, in, in what follows Xi would denote the ith element of the vector X. I know from the necessary conditions for optimality, f of x star transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, what does this mean? Let's think about it. So here is the region x greater than or equal to zero. Okay, let me pick a point here. I'm going to pick a point here x, or let me put it x star. I can define two points in one in which I have, so this one, in this particular point, I have x1 star plus one, x2 star, and this point is x1 star, x2 star plus one. Let me 
remove these red lines. Okay, does this uh, make sense? So I pick any point x star, then I know that if I add one to any of the elements of x star, that particular point is going to lie within the set S, x itself. So let me pick x to be x1 star, xj star plus one, and xn star. So I am going to leave all the elements unchanged except for the jth element where I'm going to add one to the value. So if I put it in this particular expression, what do I get? I get that gradient of fx star So ej is the unit vector in ith in the jth direction. Um, so I get gradient of fx star x star plus ej minus x star must be greater than equal to zero. What does this imply? Excuse me, can you speak loudly? Uh, uh, the element is positive. So, does that imply that uh, delta f x star is uh, positive semi definite? No, it's all the so gradient of fx star is always a, a a vector. It's not a matrix. The second derivative is a matrix. So, so positive definiteness is defined for a square matrix, not for a vector. So, what is this uh, this equal to? This is gradient of fx star transpose ej. So ej is zero along all directions and one only in the jth element. What is gradient of fx transpose ej? Oh, that means the gradient of x star is all of ej. That's right. So this is the partial derivative of the function f along the jth direction evaluated at x star, and that has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so if you are optimizing over a, a positive orthant or non-negative orthant, so this is a non-negative orthant. And if you're optimizing a function over that, at the optimal point, the derivative with respect to any of the dimension is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Now let's assume that xk star is strictly positive. Okay, so I'm looking at the kth element of, well, I've used ij, let's, let me use l because k could be confused with the iteration index. So let's assume that the lth dimension of x star is strictly positive. Then what happens? I can define my x to be x star minus x star l over two into el. So what is this equal to? This is x one star 
xl star over 2 xn star okay let's plug it back into the necessary conditions for optimality what do we get gradient of fx star transpose x minus x star is greater than equal to zero minus xl star over 2 multiplied by el is greater than equal to 0. What is this equal to? What does this imply? So let's think about it. So my xl star is positive. So xl star over 2 is also positive. So I can take this negative XL star over two on the other side, but I can flip the inequality sign here. Okay, so this greater than equal to becomes less than equal to because I've taken a negative term onto the other side. And what does this imply? This expression, gradient of FX star transpose EL less than equal to zero. imply that it doesn't meet the necessary conditions? Um, let's hold on to that conclusion for a moment uh, because the necessary condition is still satisfied. So Excel, I'm just assuming that my lth dimension is positive at this point of time. So what I get is del f over del x l evaluated at x star is less than equal to zero. So so let's, let's think about it. So for any X star, what we have noted here is that for any X star, this condition is valid. So the derivative, the partial derivative along all directions has to be non-negative. What, what we are claiming here is that if any of the values are strictly positive, then the partial derivative with respect to that element has to be less than equal to zero. What this implies is if XL star is positive, then how can a, how can a derivative be both positive, not positive, but non-negative and non-positive? Well, only if it is equal to zero. So if XL star is greater than zero, then the partial derivative of the function F with respect to XL evaluated at x star must be equal to zero. Okay. So if you are optimizing over a positive or non-negative orthant, then your partial derivatives has to be non-negative. And if one of the values, one of the elements of the optimal solution is strictly positive, then the partial derivative along that particular direction or along that coordinate must be equal to zero. That's what we have proved here. Okay. And you can come, can come up with uh, similar expressions for uh, optimizing functions over simplex or optimizing function over a box set and so on and so forth by following the same train of thought. Okay. 
any questions on this on this particular example so this is the example okay let's proceed to example 2 Let me write what the problem is. I want to minimize the function fx such that a is less than equal to x is less than equal to b. So whenever I write a vector is less than equal to another vector, it means that, so a less than equal to x implies that ai less than equal to xi for all i. So all the elements of the vector x must be greater than equal to all the elements of vector ai to the corresponding elements of the vector ai so what does this constraint looks like well actually it looks like a box so therefore i call it a box constraint so this particular vector is a this vector is b and anything, everything inside this box is basically this is all x. A less than equal to x less than equal to b. Okay. Let's say we are given the, uh, uh, we, we again want to characterize what happens at the optimal point X star if we are given this particular uh, box constraint, then following the similar argument as above, We have it's greater than equal to zero if xi star equals to ai, it's equal to zero if a i is strictly less than x i star is strictly less than b i. Okay, so you can use the same argument as above to show that at x star, the derivative of the function along each of the directions must satisfy the following set of inequalities. So if xi star is the lower bound ai, then it must be, the derivative must be non-negative. If xi star lies in between ai and bi, then the derivative must vanish, must be equal to zero. And if xi star is equal to the upper limit bi along that coordinate, then the derivative, the partial derivative must be non-positive, less than equal to zero. So equal to zero is completely fine, but it should be less than equal to zero. It cannot be positive.
Okay. Let's look at the third example. Let's say I want to minimize half norm of C plus X square AX equal to zero. Okay, so this is a convex function. And this is a convex set. Okay, let's say somebody claims a genie comes and it claims that well x star in this case should be negative identity minus x star must satisfy i mean x star is equal to this how am i going to prove that the genie is correct or wrong what do you think we should do Recall that we are doing, we are minimizing a convex function over a convex set. This is, of course, two norm that we are squaring. How should we go about doing it? Check to see if it meets the sufficient condition. Right. So, so what do we need to show? We need to show that gradient of fx star transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to zero for all x such that ax is equal to zero. Right, that's the sufficient condition. So for all x in capital X, so capital X is the set of all x such that ax equal to zero, I must satisfy that the gradient of f at x star must be uh, must make a positive or non-negative inner product with x minus x star so let's look at gradient of f at x star what's the gradient of half c plus x norm square What should the norm be? Come on, someone should be able to answer this question. What's the gradient of C plus X square? C plus X, okay. C plus X. C plus X, right? So the gradient of F at X star must be C plus X star. And what is C plus X star? So someone is, so the genie is claiming that X star is equal to this horrible expression. So X star plus C seems to be A transpose, A, A transpose inverse AC. Right, so there is minus identity C, so I take it on the other side. So I get C plus X star on the left side. And on the right side, this negative gets multiplied by this negative. So we don't have a negative sign here. And then I have rest of the expression. Okay, so now let's look at gradient of f at x star transpose 
x minus x star. This is equal to C transpose A transpose A A transpose inverse A times x minus x star. What is this uh, value equal to? Let's, let's try to figure out what the value is equal to. So this term is just a vector. Let me call it V. So I have maybe V transpose. I have V transpose A x minus x star. What do we know about x and x star? Of course, x is in capital X. x star is also in capital X. And we know that every point in the set capital X makes ax equal to 0, right? Same thing happens for x star as well. And what we have here is that AX and we have AX star, both of which are equal to zero and therefore this whole term is equal to zero. Okay, and therefore it satisfies the necessary condition for optimality. Well, both necessary and sufficient because the function F is convex. Okay, so what did we conclude from this? Well, the genie is actually correct. This is indeed the optimal solution to the optimization problem here. Um, the reason being that when we check the sufficient condition for optimality, it is actually met for this problem. And since the function f is convex, uh, we know for sure that this is an optimal solution. Okay, any question on this uh, particular example? Okay. So, so far what we have done is we talked about the constraint optimization. We uh, identified the necessary conditions for optimality. And in case the function f is convex, we know that x star is a global minimum if and only if it satisfies the necessary conditions for optimality. So the necessary condition also becomes sufficient. We then applied this particular information the, or this uh, result to optimization over non-negative orthant in the beginning. Then we extended this result to optimization over box set. So we kind of understand what the derivative of the function would look like at uh, along each of the dimensions, uh, depending on whether xi star is equal to ai or not, right? And the, the third example we considered was minimizing a convex set over a, minimizing a convex function over a convex set. And somebody told us what the result looks like. And we were able to quickly verify that the result is actually correct because it meets the sufficient condition for optimality. Now, this is not, th this is all great, but now we want to come up with algorithms to compute X star or compute uh, a local minimum for a given function. Um, and that's what the main focus of uh, the rest of the week is going to be, which is uh, coming up with algorithms for solving optimization over convex set. So let's, let's think about it a little bit. Uh, we have about five minutes to think about it. Let's say I have a big convex set and I have a, I want to minimize the function fx over this convex set capital X. And I start from some point x0. 
And let's assume that we use the vanilla gradient descent algorithm. So I come to X1, which is X0 minus alpha zero gradient of FX0. Then I come to X2, which is equal to X1 minus alpha one gradient of FX1. And then I get to X3, which is X2 minus alpha two gradient of FX2. Now we have, we, are, we have a problem, which is while X1 and X2 was within the convex set and we were happy about it, uh, we took another gradient step for some value of alpha two and we went outside the set, okay? Uh, now that we have gone outside the set, what all strategies can we try in order to go back into the set? Because we are trying to minimize the function over the set. So we don't want to go outside the set. So what can we try to do now that we are outside the set? What are the different ideas you guys have to deal with this problem? We can project X3 back to the convex set. Okay. So the first idea project X3 back to the convex set. What do you mean by projecting a point back to the set? Oh, uh, we can choose the closest point on the convex set. Okay, choose the closest point on the convex set. All right, so projecting X3 back to the convex set means the, means picking the closest point in X, okay? So closest point to X3 in X. Okay, so that's idea number one. What's another idea we could try? Uh, you can add the constraint uh, to the optimizing algorithm so that the point doesn't go out of the convex set. Great. Okay, so so let's we have to massage that particular idea a little bit. Okay, so there are multiple things to pick here. Okay, so one is we can pick the descent direction d, and the other is we can pick the value of alpha. Right. So what part do you want to pick in order to not go outside of the convex set? The descent direction. Descent direction, great. I'm sometimes surprised how you guys come up with such answers on the fly, but yes, you, you are absolutely right. So, so let's pick descent direction such that um, the next iterate lies within the convex set. That's absolutely perfect. These are the two ideas that we are going to talk about in the next class. <laughs> All right, so first we want to talk about uh, projection, which is, you know, one of the idea is to project XC back to the point um, that is in the convex set. So I'll call this X3 prime and X3 prime gets mapped back to the convex set X3 where we need to find what is the point that is closest to uh, point X3 in the convex set. Oh, sorry, what is the closest to point X3 prime and lies inside the convex set. So that requires us to know a little bit about projection operation. And so we'll talk about projection theorem first thing in the next class. And then we'll talk about gradient, not gradient projection. We'll talk about uh, some algorithms that does this projection operation in order to uh, iteratively find the optimal solution. And the second idea is we will pick the descent direction in an appropriate fashion 
so that when we take a step in the descent direction, we don't go outside of the convex set. Okay, so those are the two ideas. So one is the conditional gradient method, uh, which is idea number two. And idea number one is, so one is conditional gradient method and the other is, I just want to give you the name, feasible, uh, gradient projection method, okay. So those are the two topics we are going to study. And the last thing we will study, which is perhaps on Friday, we'll talk about uh, the simplex method for solving constraint optimization problem with, in with inequality constraints, um, in linear inequality constraints. So that's the last topic in the optimization over convex set that we will talk about. Uh, that'll be in the Friday's class. And these are the three topics that on which your assignment three is, uh, is based on. So after Friday's class, you should be able to complete the entire assignment three. All right. Uh, if there are any questions on the assignment slash project slash anything, we can stay back. Otherwise, feel free to leave the room. Any question on today's material or project or assignment? Professor. Yes. Uh, so all the constraint optimization problem we will meet in this courses that uh, uh, just as you said that constraint will be uh, a convex set. So no, so this is only for and for this week. So we will assume oh, okay. for this week, our constraint sets are of these types. Well, not these types, you can do any convex set, but you know, things like projection and, and other things are easier to solve when your project, when your constraint set looks like one of these sets. Okay, but for the general optimization with constraints, um, we are going to talk about it in the next week onwards, where we talk, where, where we will introduce the notion of Lagrange multipliers and talk about KKD theorem and so on, um, which is the more general tool for solving constraint optimization problem, where the constraint sets could be quite complex. Okay, okay. And in example three, uh, in, in example three, after after the somebody tell us x star equals that equation right uh, instead uh, besides check the sufficient condition do we also need to check a times x star uh, equals zero? Oh yeah of course but uh, yeah so a time x star is equal to zero in this case uh, uh, okay yeah. okay thanks yeah. thank you so much yeah I'm because just... x star lies in the set x itself okay uh, i'm just asking if uh, if we are solving this kind of uh, exercise, do we need to check uh, a x star? That's right. That's because, right. So yeah. you need to check a x star equal to zero also. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? No. All right. So let, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I have a question on the project topic. Yes. That is due. So wow. do you want to, so do you want to talk about, so this is currently being recorded. So do you want to talk about it now or do you want to talk about it in a separate office hours? Uh, yeah, if we can do a separate office hours, that would be great. Okay. Uh, can you shoot me an email and I'll send you some time slots when we can meet? Yeah, that'd be perfect. Thank perfect. You so much. Okay, uh, let's meet on Wednesday. See you guys on Wednesday then.